It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hello, everybody. This is Tyler Preston 20. Today we have a returning special guest. His name is Juan Anton. He is basically a member of the Vox Party from Spain that is located in New York. And he's going to answer some more questions in regards to the party. Juan, how are you doing? Como estas? Que tal, Tyler? Buenos dias. Como estas? I'm very happy to be back again here with you. Same here, same here. Um, last time we talked about uh, Vox Party. You briefly mentioned that your party supports uh, the rights of hunters and the rights for both fighters. I'm kind of curious, just uh, why does the Vox Party support bullfighting? So, so Tyler, that's that's a good question, and 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 it's it's important that everyone understands what bullfighting is. Okay, so so the bulls that fight uh, in a bullfighting are called toros de lidia. Okay, this. This bull is a very, very special type of bull that uh, needs to have a lot of uh, open space, very, very good food, and they really take care of them. So, so, so they are they are in freedom. They live since since they are small, since they're, since they're, since they are born, they live in an open space in a very nice uh, environment, and they really take care of them because because they are important. No, if it weren't for the bullfighting, this type of bulls wouldn't exist. Actually, actually, uh, the only reason why these bulls are still alive and 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 they they remain is because of the bullfighting. So so that's that's one thing. So the other thing is that there is a huge amount of people that lives around the bullfighting. So it's it's not only that we want to stop something, and and that's it. No, it's going to impact a lot of people. And if you really think about it uh, from from the bull perspective, and and everyone talks about the suffering of a bull, no. When, when the bull, from the bull perspective, it's an animal that lives his entire life in freedom. And he goes into a bullfighting arena to fight against a bullfighter and, and dies with honor. It doesn't die, he doesn't die in, in, in a close environment. He doesn't die like the chicken do, like the pig does. Thousands of chickens and pigs kills every day in a not very nice way. This bullfighting it's against a man and a bull. And we think this is nice. And we think this is this is we should be proud of it and and obviously for the reasons that I already uh, answered now that that it's 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 so that it has an economical uh, impact it also has a bio uh, by environmental impact because this bull would disappear. So we have to take be careful with what we do and what we think about the bullfighting. It is bloody, it's bloody on the both sides. So we have the bull uh, fighting against the human. I'm kind of curious, do you think that there is some sort of hypocrisy among animal rights activists who stand up against bullfighting or there is no form of hypocrisy from them? I think, I think there's, there is a, I think there's a mix of two things. I, I understand people that see a boot fighting and, and they don't like it. And actually my wife doesn't like it and, and we've come sometimes and, and she doesn't want to go back again because it's bloody, you know, and and you need and so I, I understand those 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 guys that don't like it. It's it's not nice. But it isn't nice either the way we kill chickens, the way that we kill cows, the way we kill animals. But this this is life, no? So so we need to eat. And and that's the only way of doing it. We can find better ways, but 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 this is what we have, no? I think there is a lot of hypocrisy, as you say, uh, in some people. Some others, I understand that they have a view, and then they don't like it. But some of them, they just use it as a electoral call, and 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 they and they want to go against traditions, against once again in Spain. So we gotta be careful because there is many other things you can fight for uh, to defend the animals before bullfighting. And I don't see these guys talking about these many other things. No? Uh, we have the situation with the whales, again, going back to the way we kill animals. And, and even in Spain, there are some traditions that are not nice with bulls and animals. Uh, so we got to really be careful. So I think 
a big percentage of the people that are against bullfighting, it's hypocrisy. A big, also a good percentage might be ignorance. And some others, it's just because they can't can't stand uh, the blood. But there's, as I said, there's many other things that are, uh, uh, I wouldn't say worse, but are also very, very bloody and they don't say anything about them. Another controversial topic is the issue of abortion. As I currently know it, at least the majority of Western countries have it legalized. However, some countries go a bit too far. For example, in my country, what we have so far with the situation is that it has been legal since the 70s, since uh, Roe versus Wade. However, in some states, as I speak right now, such as the state of New York, Virginia, and New Mexico, some of the legislators there, they want to make sure that abortion happens after the fetus is born. I'm kind of curious, what is the Vox position on abortion? And does the Vox Party have plans to change the law for uh, Spain to illegalize abortion or keep it as it is? What's their plans for the laws for abortion? Tyler, that, that's a very sensitive uh, topic for me. And, 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 and I am even more radical. I would say that, that what Vox is saying. Uh, I think there is not a single reason why we should kill a baby. There is, there is no not reason at all for someone to decide over the life of someone else. And you can go and do as many research as you want to and see when life begins. The life begins with the cigotos and that's, that's right away at the beginning. So an abortion, from my point of view, it's an assassination. It's killing the most in defense creature in the world at any stage. So what we think we have to do, uh, and there's a good example for this, like Poland, uh, where, uh, where abortions have been reduced for 100,000 per year to 10,000, is we need to give options to the mother. We need to give options to the family. We need to invest money and invest in a pro-life policy, not in a dead life policy. And again, no one, no one ever has a say over the life of anyone. And that's, this, is, this is one of the most, or the, 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 the biggest abominations that, have, that the human being is going through. Uh, this, I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't express well my, myself how I feel about this. In New York, we just got a law, uh, Governor Cuomo has approved a law, where you can kill your baby right the day before it's born. Actually, sometimes even even later if it is still connected to the mom. No, that that's horrible. That's 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 incredible. And not only there is not only uh, uh, the this this situation with the baby where you are killing someone else, but also what it's going behind and after in terms of economic. Those babies are being sold uh, after the abortions. And some of these babies, when they try to abort them, sometimes they are born alive and they let them to die. I don't think I don't think people is conscious of what is going on. Sixty million abortions—that's a whole country. It's the huge or the biggest genocide uh, the history has has been gone through. Uh, I, I I really I really uh, think this this we have to change this. Box party here is politics is very very clear. We have to give options to the mothers. We have to give options to the families and we have to give always options to the babies. Let's invest in life. Let's give these moms happiness or try to help them and try to explain them how does it work. And then if they don't want the baby, let's give it an adoption. There is thousands of hundreds of families that are looking to adopt babies. Let's give these babies the chance to live as anyone else in this world has and had and will have. In the Middle East, there has been a major conflict between Israel and Palestine for many, many years. I'm curious, what is the Vox stance for Israel and Palestine? Is it in favor of Israel? Is it in favor of Palestine? Is it neutral? Tyler, the situation in, in between Israel and, and Palestine, it's, it's, it's very tough and, and there's people there's a lot of people dying uh, in both sides, uh, and we are always against that. Uh, it's, 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 what can I say about about war? It's always horrible. No, 
But what we think about in box about uh, Israel is that it's almost the only uh, democracy in in that part of the world. Uh, it's it's a free country where there's a lot of investment. They have all roots. They they have a occidental culture, and and they're allied with with many occidental uh, countries. No and. And they also they have been suffering. So so what we say what we say from Vox is that uh, Israel should have their lands, should have the the empowerment as they have to defend their borders and to live in in peace. No, uh, the the conflict with Palestinian, as I said, is horrible and needs to be fixed amongst both parts uh, with the help of international community. But I think Vox is the only party in Spain that has openly uh, talked in defense of the Israelis uh, in, in Israel. Speaking about conflicts, there has been a major conflict and still is a major conflict in the South American country of Venezuela. In the last interview we did together, you mentioned that you have no problem with immigrants coming to Spain legally. And you also mentioned that South Americans and Latin Americans in general from Latin American countries tend to integrate more into Spain better because they speak the same language and share the same culture. I'm curious, what is the Vox stance on um, the whole situation with Venezuela? Do you guys recognize Maduro as the leader for uh, Venezuela? Do you recognize the intern uh, president as the legitimate leader of Venezuela? What is your thoughts? That's a good question, Tyler. Uh, actually, yesterday, I don't think it was yesterday, and it was the day before, our Vice Secretary of Foreign Affairs uh, had a meeting in, in Madrid to talk about Venezuela and, and Cuba, and actually also Ro, uh, Rocío Monasterio, uh, that is one of our leaders, was there. She's Cuban, and, and she knows perfectly the situation in Cuba. But going to the, to the point of uh, Venezuela, uh, we are very clear there, okay? Maduro has to leave and has to pay what, for what he has done and has to uh, be presented into the courts. Uh, the number of assassination, it's not a secret. You can see it on the on the TV every single day, and, and this can last uh, more. I have, I have many Venezuelan friends that had to leave the country because it was, there was no way they could live there, and they're living abroad. And and this this has to stop. This has it has to end right away. And we hope that uh, the United States at some point gets involved as as they are as they are doing, but in a more direct way. So uh, from box, what we what we uh, we were discussing the other day about uh, immigration. These guys not only immigration, but these are refugees. So they have to escape from their country because there is no way they can live. There is a lack of food, there is a lack of medicines, there is a lack of security. Uh, people are just being killed. So 100% we are against uh, what Maduro has been doing during the last year and service previously to him. And, and, and we are open to receive as many Venezuelans as, we, as, we, as they want to come to Spain. Actually, there's a lot of people that has been coming during the last year and even more during the last month. And, and we are more than happy to help our brothers from Venezuela. This has to stop. Freedom needs to come to Venezuela, uh, and they have to go through elections and in a democratic way to, to, to select uh, their new president. As most people know, Spain passed a constitution in 1978, which basically made the entire nation a more modern-day democracy. And this was happening after the fall of Franco, which is an infamous dictator in Spain's time. And obviously, many, many people in power decided to pass a law that was called the Historical Memory Law, La Ley de la Memoria Historica. I'm kind of curious, what is uh, Vox's position on that law? Is it in favor of it? Is it against it? Does it want to get rid of it? So, Tyler, the civil war in Spain was horrible. Uh, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was very sad. It was very bloody. And, and, and you were... You were you were, you, you'll see brothers fighting against brothers, families that were friends fighting against each other. Uh, a lot of lot of church burns, a lot of priest kills, uh, a lot of people that at the end in a horrible in a horrible war. Uh, and and if all wars are horrible, the civil one is 
is even worse because at the end of the day you're fighting against your your friends, your colleagues, your your uh, between Spaniards. No, la ley de memoria histórica. It's one of the worst things that the piece of uh, the, the the socialist has done ever because he has brought back to Spain the dispute and the fraction between the descendants of the Red Wing, as we call it, and, and, and the nationals. No? So something that was forgiven and that was uh, forgotten through the Constitution in the 78 was brought back to the society because of this law. And, and when you think about a law that it's done after so many years after the war and the Constitution, you think that if you want to repair something, you have to repair it for both sides of the of the confrontation, no? both sides of the war, the nationals and the and the communist. This law, it's only going against what the nationals did. And obviously there is a lot of descendant and there is a lot of history uh, in Spain that it's supported by by the right wing party as as uh, as we are no so so we think is a law that only protects one piece of its history doesn't make sense we even think that there is no need of a law after the constitution where all the spaniards reached to an agreement of moving forward and trying to forget about what uh, the horrible war no um we're going through situations where statues have been destroyed, where, chain, where streets of names of streets have been uh, deleted, uh, where they're going against uh, the descendants and, and the history of, of, of just one side of the conflict, and and actually uh, they're trying to unbury some of the, in in this case Franco, that it's the, the dictator of that period. They wanted to unbury and move it so that's that's bringing up a lot of sensitivity that's bringing back to the table a discussion that was uh, forgotten forgiven no and and that's not good and that's having going on through some years and it's getting worse and worse because obviously uh, there's people that don't like what is going on and and we shouldn't be fractioning so when you have a political party and this is something that the socialism and the communists would want to do they want to fraction a fracture and divide the society uh, and that's something that a political party should ever do what you have to do is to put the people together to work and and roll in the same direction instead of just going one for one uh, one way and the other, no. Uh, la memoria histórica, that law has to be absolutely uh, eliminated, and 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 try to bring back the peace and the unity of Spain again. Hey Tyler, thank you very much for your time today. Uh, it's it's been great, and uh, as always, I have to tell you two things. Uh, my kids can't stop singing your uh, song at the beginning of the program. Then they really like it. And also, I received a couple of uh, messages from my my uh, friends in in Spain, and they love your program. Uh, actually, there's one of them that lives in in Dubai, and and he shoot me a a message saying this this guy Tyler is amazing. I I love the way he he drives and the program and he presents his stuff so again congratulations and for your program and i hope uh, you you enjoy uh, the conversation and it gives some more information about what box is is trying to do is trying to accomplish in spain uh, there's a lot of things to change and this is just the beginning same here i really appreciate you coming on my uh, show and hopefully many people in english-speaking countries and across the world will understand the positions of Vox in a much more accessible way in their own language. Thanks again. Muchas gracias. Muchas gracias a ti, Tyler. Es siempre un placer hablar contigo. Y um, whenever you want. Take care. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare as you should be aware He smiles like Richard Pryor so just sit and stare It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler